hello welcome thank you anyone tuning in to watch uh, uh, to connect again to one of my video tours on this production 5d guide today we are once again in central park and uh, we are picking up on uh, something that we experienced on the, the last video tour on last video tour uh, which you can find on the timeline of this page uh, we explored the Halid nature sanctuary and explored the double dynamic of sanctity that we have over at uh, that incredible space the work that was done to bring it into uh, such dimension uh, and today we're here on the southern edge of the park to take a look uh, from uh, what from this perspective kind of looks like a piece of rock uh, just like the many rocks that we have all throughout the park uh, the only difference is that this rock that we just that we appear to have in front of us is not a rock but actually a sculpture a sculpture that from this perspective again looks like a piece of Manhattan mica schist uh, the bedrock of Manhattan and what allows for developers to build such tall skyscrapers and uh, what's one of the defining features of the design of Central Park uh, we have these rocks everywhere Belvedere Castle uh, which will be featured on a future video tour uh, it's on top of a rock on top of on top of Vista rock a giant piece of Manhattan mica schist and then uh, just for uh, just some time just a couple of months we have on display this uh, sculpture that kind of looks like a rock I'm approaching it and by the way the space that we are approaching is called the Doris Friedman Plaza the Doris Friedman Plaza is a space that since the 1970s has been used has been used as a uh, as a space to display public art. Doris Friedman was the founder of the Public Art Fund, an organization that today endeavors to put up public art exhibits all over the city. As you see, there's a lot of activity happening at this space. This is one of the main entrances to Central Park, and the sculpture that we are exploring is just right in front of us. It looks like one of the giant pieces of Manhattan mica schist that we have throughout the park, but upon closer inspection, we begin to pick up on uh, many other different things. Uh, just taking a closer look, uh, we already begin to see that there's a sword uh, tilting the camera down a little bit. We see that there's this sort of uh, luggage anchoring uh, this giant piece of rock and there's also this uh, chair as well. Uh, just walking by this, it's kind of like uh, encountering what you encounter in a dream maybe. Something that doesn't kind of make sense something that is of incredible cultural value and significance and something that communicates to us on many many levels so from uh, where we were before from the particular spot where we were before we saw this giant piece it looks like a rock uh, and then uh, upon closer inspection we see that it's anchored on all these elements on a suitcase and two chairs and a couple of wooden uh, what appear to be supports now before we take a look at the other side, which is where the reference of this video title titles comes into play, a tilted head in Central Park, this is where this dynamic of a tilted head is going to show up. Let me tilt the camera back up so that we can take a look at some of the signage as well. This is the Doris Friedman Plaza. This is the entrance to Central Park over here. And if we read, before we get to the sign that's in red there, we can read over here that this is a Scholar's Gate. There are 20 named entrances in Central Park and this is a video tour onto itself. But really we're here to take a look at this sign. This is the literature that is on display accompanying this, this exhibit, which is here from, uh, which has been here since March 6th of this year, March 6th of 2019, and will be taken down on September 9, 2019. So, if you are visiting New York before September 9, or if you live in New York, uh, definitely come and check this out because it's a unique site. It's a place where, or a section of Central Park where you can engage in a lot, see a lot of interesting things, and there's beautiful architecture and a drastically changing panorama. But let's take a look at what this is. Already we read the name of the artist. Mark Manders is a creator of this sculpture here. He is from uh, Germany or Holland, I forget. Uh, Tilted Head is the title of the work. And some literature over here which reads, Mark Manders' Tilted Head is a work of fiction. It has the appearance of unfired clay combined with everyday objects, but in fact is made entirely of cast bronze. 
So already we pick up on the dynamics of material. It looks like something, but it's made out of something completely different. This uh, further reads, the cracks and fissures that cover its surface imply an organic process of drying and decay, yet its metal form is fixed. It might suggest an incomplete model abandoned in the artist's studio, if not for the fact that its colossal size and civic location lend it the air of a grand monument. And that has to do with location. This is installed at a very prominent location in New York City. Eyes shot, the androgynous figure's mask-like features are at rest, undisturbed by an abrupt slice through a third of its face. The unfinished side of the head is held as if in a splint by wooden planks, one tied with rope. At the back, chairs and a suitcase, which is what we saw, all slightly reduced in size, protrude from a mass of formless material. These shifts in scale, unexplained objects, and from loyal bronze effects alter our perception and spark the imagination. And it does. This is something that in many, many ways uh, incites us to uh, fire up all these uh, neurological processes in our brain with all this incredible richness of material and the visual variety. We're going to take a look at it from the other side and get that reference of a tilted head. But uh, before we do that, let's read a little bit upon the artist himself. Manders was born in the Netherlands in 1968. He has been interested in the human figure through his career and is particularly fascinated with the head, which he sometimes depicts detached from the body and juxtaposed with different elements. These heads are always stylized representations rather than individualized portraits. His approach creates a paradoxical sense of both immediacy and timelessness. That's very interesting, timelessness. How can a work of art create for this dynamic or allow for this dynamic of having us enter into a timeless space? So both sense of immediacy and timelessness of something newly made with fresh clay yet belonging to the traditions of classical statuary. With tilted head, Manders has rendered a compelling fiction of human form that inhabits a poetic space between representation and abstraction, serenity and, rap and rupture, life and mortality. And then uh, you see the name of the director uh, and chief curator of the Public Art Fund, this organization that was established by, uh, by Doris Friedman. And going back to the work, again, from this perspective, it looks like a giant lump of clay. Because of this particular context, I almost equate it to what you see with the giant pieces of Manhattan like a schist. On the previous video tour, we explored that giant lump of rock, which is called the Hallett Nature Sanctuary. We actually went in it and explored a little bit uh, from, uh, from the outside, from the edges along the pond. If you haven't checked that video out, definitely check it out. It's on the timeline on this uh, Facebook page, on the Facebook page, which is the first place where these videos are posted. Um, so yeah, picking up on the chair, the dynamics, Something that looks like it's clay, it's actually bronze and you can see it, you can see all the cracks and all the fissures, it's almost as if this big lump of clay has been left out to dry. And again, the, the visual dynamic of different uh, elements, these chairs, also made out of bronze, uh, contrasting with what appears to be clay and pieces of wood and rope as well, tying it together. From this point, it looks very unfinished, but as we move around, If we move towards the front, we can pick up and see the silhouette of the head. Art in spaces like these is uh, enjoyed by everyone, it's difficult to just avoid it. And it evolves so much. People engage with it in so, so many interesting ways. I'll try to make these video tours a little bit more frequent just so that I myself can pick up on a particular dialogue and particular sets of ideas and communicate them using different things uh, that we see throughout Central Park as this is an incredibly rich space it's a space that was built for people to renew their minds, to renew their spirits. And so also something very important is that this park in the middle of Manan was also built to maximize real estate value. 
Along the perimeter of Central Park, we have some of the most expensive properties in the world. Directly across over there is the iconic Plaza Hotel, popular for the movie Home Alone 2, Lost in New York. Uh, one time, a uh, uh, property that belonged to Donald Trump, current president of the United States. The black building in the middle there is uh, actually Trump Tower down on Fifth Avenue and spanning the camera back west. We see these incredible towers being built along the southern perimeter of the park. Uh, looking up over there, you see those very tall, skinny buildings. And in the middle there, the building that is still under scaffolding is expected to become the tallest residential building in the Western Hemisphere. And just right next to that building, it's a, a building right on 59th Street where not too long ago an apartment sold for $238 million. That's, ex that's the most expensive home ever sold in the United States. And what, a, what allows for that value in part are the incredible views that those apartments have of this uh, three-dimensional piece of the countryside that was built in the middle of Manhattan. A piece of real estate that is always enhanced with new uh, uh, temporary exhibits and this is one of the spaces where those exhibits are installed here in Central Park. Tilted Head, again the work of Mark Manders evoking all so many things in our imaginations, refreshing our perspectives and connecting with this landscape and this setting in very, very unique ways. <laughs> From this particular point, we again begin to pick up. We see a little bit of the silhouette of the figure. We see the lips. We see the nose. We see the unfinished plate. And upon closer inspection, we see almost as if a piece of wood has been uh, placed inside the clay itself. We can almost pick up on dynamics of uh, fingers molding the clay but again this is not clay this is actually bronze uh, this particular dynamic of having something uh, look like something but actually be something else in french is called front loyal front loyal is that translates basically to fool the eye it's a quality that makes you think of something but in actuality it is actually something else a very powerful metaphor for how life even operates sometimes. Sometimes we see things and experience things and those things actually mean uh, something else. I love the contrast as well as I am standing here. I'm gonna span the camera up. We see this unfinished product, what appears to be wood, but it's actually bronze. And then uh, uh, just in the background back there, you see those incredible new towers that are just being built. Those buildings have been built in recent times. Again, this goes to show on the development on how reality can be transformed and how today and age we have ended up with spaces that are selling for $238 million. If you keep your mind fresh and renewed, there's just incredible things that can be done. And Central Park allows, us for, allows for us to explore that and exercise that ability so that we can basically reinvent our lives. Nowadays, more than ever, it's very important for us to really connect to resources that can uh, refresh us and uh, renew us. Today is a warm day in New York, temperature is in the 80s but it feels very very humid so it feels like it's a lot uh, much much warmer but it's comfortable to be out, it's comfortable to enjoy. This is a uh, looking south, the golden sculpture that you see at the center there is uh, the Sherman Monument which in all probability will be featured in another video tour. I want to thank you for tuning in. Uh, live video tours are interesting. People drop in and out. That's part of the experience. But if you have the possibility and the time, look back and uh, look at this video in its entirety and try to connect to this thread, thread of video tours that I'm organizing. If you happen to be in New York and you are visiting, look out and maybe check and see. Uh, connect to my very page and go to my tours section and come on a tour of Central Park. that is being done and as always many many ambulances all right thank you for your attention have a wonderful afternoon or morning depending where you are and when you are watching i hope you've enjoyed tilted head if you visit come check it out it's going to be here up until september 1st of 2019 and after that there'll be something else and i'll be organizing to create another video so creating a memory of what will be installed at this very spot here. Again, this is the Dolores Friedman Plaza. Thank you for your attention. Goodbye.